all that I ever needed to know about social media and marketing is something that I learned when I was a kid and it was from my daddy. Now daddy, the important thing to understand here is that daddy was fairly asocial. He, he was not at all one for small talk. He was absolutely not a good person for the schmooze. But I learned this most powerful and very important lesson. So when I was a kid, I was a member of something called Civil Air Patrol. And we did, as cadets, we learned uh, all sorts of things about search and rescue methods. We actually helped with search and rescue uh, situations. We learned radio communications, first aid, all sorts of practical things like that. We learned about flying airplanes, which is really cool. And at one point, we were out for an exercise of some sort, some training exercise. And then when we got back that night, that evening, Daddy sat down and wrote an article for the local newspaper. Now, today what parents would do would be to post a bunch of pictures on Facebook and hashtag everybody and give all sorts of identifiers of the people and where they were and what they were doing. Back then, no Facebook, no Instagram, and it was the local paper. So what he did was he wrote an article and he put down the specific names of kids, which was totally appropriate. And what he said to me is that what people want in these kinds of local papers is they want local names. That was it. That's the whole thing is that you get your connection, you connect with your community, you make your outreach by you talking about the people who are in the community already and talking about them positively and what they're doing. And if there are pictures to go along, so much the better. Contrast and compare moment. A few months ago, I had signed up for something called Groove AI, paid $1,000 for the privilege. It's a decision that I now regret, but you're going to get a little benefit because I'm going to at some point do a little walkthrough, talk through of how I use Pinecone, which is the vector database, with the GPT of choice and some little front end. And we'll take a look at the mechanisms. So it's not entirely wasted money, but there's this guy representing Groove AI. I'm not even going to give his name. I'm so tempted, but I'm not even going to tell you. He's giving big puppy eyes as he describes this process of how you can use ChatGPT to generate, I think in this case, it was blogs to promote a local. He was picking a business quasi at random. It's sort of like his storytelling. He was sort of making up a story about a woman who owned a doggy daycare, doggy grooming business. And he was putting inputs into chat GPT to write a set of blogs about this and they were coming out so so cutesy cheesy that my stomach turned it was like ooh, ooh ick I don't want to read that kind of thing now he's saying oh this is such a great way for this business owner who's so busy to promote her business because she used to be posting up pictures of clients dogs up on Instagram but she's working so hard and she doesn't have the time to do that so let's have chat GPT generate this marketing spiel okay so chat G <laughs> to God chat GPT generates this totally bland and banal and you can't distinguish one business from another spiel so there's going to be within short order 20 businesses like that 200 2000 who knows they're all going to look and sound very much the same everybody's going to throw up their blogs and it's going to be a complete loss of signal to noise so here's the word what you want whether you're working for yourself or a company or an organization in this context, you want to maximize your particular signal to noise ratio. For my students, we had this a couple of fabulous sync sessions. Recently, we had one last week with the capstone, one this week with the people in natural language processing, NLP. And what I'm loving and what is so important about the work, everybody's got a very real project that they're working on. Typically, the project has a very real client as the focus. But no matter how it goes, they're talking about a real client, real needs, and very specifically what they can do using NLP methods. And we are not just sort of randomly pulling down chat GPT polls, or even, in fact, the issue is not how fancy an algorithm you can use. The issue is, what are your client's needs? Absolutely. Look at your client. Look at your client's data. What does the client need to get one little itsy bitsy baby step? And it may be that you don't need the fanciest algorithm. Maybe that you don't need an LLM. Maybe that you don't need to bolt something onto an LLM. 
and create something like a chatbot for that organization. Maybe you do. Maybe you do need the fancy things. Maybe you need like a big text summarization and an internal engine to go and access this very complicated database. It depends 100% on your client. 100%. And it depends on tuning what you've got in terms of the skills that you've mastered and that are and that you're carrying with you kind of like a carpenter has a tool bag depends on the needs of the situation. If you don't need to move in a whole mobile workshop with all kinds of fancy power tools, if you basically need a little hand drill and some basic this is so funny. I'm, I'm using as an analogy what you might need and there's construction noise in the background and I'm trying to work around that. Fine tune the algorithms that you select to your client's needs. So here we are. We are well into year two of the LLM era. And you know what's really important is we're going to get through this whole LLM arc so incredibly fast. The most important thing that you can do for yourself is learn enough generative AI so that as we emerge into that next stage, which is real AI, because generative AI is not really AI. It's a set of algorithms that are really pretty, pretty limited. We'll talk about that more. So in these YouTubes, the idea is to give you just one, just one call to action and not like did your attention in three different directions. The one call to action is that I'm asking you to develop your personal plan, figure out how you are going to self-educate about generative AI and how you're going to leapfrog ahead because the era of real AI, the era of AGI is not that far off. Elon Musk is saying it's 2030. He's obviously not looking at the algorithms that we're talking about. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a lot closer. Now, of course, that's algorithmic foundations, not commercial products. If you're an AI practitioner, you need to have a strategy. You need to get on top of generative AI as it is right now, and you need to have a plan to get into AGI as it emerges. So let me offer just a couple of quick suggestions. First of all, if you have not signed up with this, if you're not opted in, please go to the Themesis website. Go to the About page. I know I told you this so many times. If you haven't, now is the time. About page. Scroll down. Opt in form. Opt in. Do the confirmation. Move the emails over to the folder that you usually read because we send things out usually once a week, maybe a little bit more often. And we are addressing how do you, how do you teach yourself generative AI. We have YouTubes on that subject that come out through this channel, so just track the channel. Subscribe if that helps. The emails from Themesis will tell you when we've got something new. They'll tell you when we've got blog posts. They'll tell you when we've got special resources that are not YouTube-ish, but you really want to know about them anyway. So the best solution to keep informed is opt in, check your emails, check them regularly. Next thing, if you do that, you're well on the way to establishing a mechanism for a strategy. But let me just suggest two more steps. Salon. You only get invitations to Salon if you've opted in. It's not like a closed community, but it is an invitation-only community. This coming Sunday, we are talking about LLMs. The good, the bad, and the practical. We've got three speakers, one in each area. What I'm going to pose to our speakers will be, suppose that we're playing a mental game of, of checkers, and you know that the best way to get to the end of the board is you jump over pieces and, of course, collect your opponent's pieces in the process. Let's start imaginarily jumping over LLMs as they exist right now. What's the AGI that's going to emerge not too terribly long from now? What's it going to be like? What can we do with it? So instead of tuning our attention to LLMs as they exist now, can we start to proactively envision ourselves in a situation of dealing with AGI just a couple of years down the road? So this is a much more effective use of focusing our strategy because it gives us a longer arc and we're not constantly being in a reactive mode. So steps so far, opt in, get those emails. Step two, particularly check those emails that invite you to Salon. Sign up for the Salon. Well worth your time, well worth your money. You're going to be in a crowd and we need to be in community. We need to talk with each other and not just get caught up in the whirlwind of way too many blogosphere posts. Final we're offering the short course. It's called Top 10 Terms in Statistical Mechanics. What it really is, is an introduction to generative AI. 
there is enough in there of the fundamentals that you really truly need. We're talking about the reverse callback Liebler, Bayesian probabilities, and of course statistical mechanics, enough walkthroughs of enough walkthroughs of key paragraphs and very important papers, enough links to the important papers that you would then be able to read on your own with some degree of confidence that is only a three week course. Three weeks I was promising sort of a gentle immersion you have your choices to the levels of depth that you go. You can go gentle and light. You can go deep. But that is, to the best of my knowledge, the very best way. The videos that I've been creating lately to put into that short course suite, most of the time I craft a lighter, gentler, shorter version that goes here on YouTube. If you must, if you intend to create your own short course on the fly, you can use the resources that we offer, which we tell you about via emails from Themesis so please go and opt in. Uh, and also we offer enough, enough useful tidbits via YouTube for you to put together a pretty workable approach or sign up for the short course. And another reason to opt in is that you get word on our flash sales. So those are the times that you can grab short course participation at a greatly reduced cost. We'll have the next flash sale around the end of this month. So if you're going to be an AI professional, and most important, if you're going to leapfrog over the current state of the art and get into the AGI that is truly emerging. I mean, the fundamental equations are being worked out right now. We're working on the architectures. People will be able to do very real projects at the very basic level. But within several months, they'll be filling in the basics for what we need for true AGI. If you want to be on top of that, because the physics is more complicated than that for generative AI. It's going to take a little bit more lead time. So get started now. Immediate focus, generative AI. Immediate task, get over to Themesis, opt in. Get into the information queue, participate in salons so you're talking with an intelligent community of like-minded adults who are being level-headed, calm, and mature, and who are talking tech in just enough depth so that it's a useful and valuable conversation. And then put together your own educational program. Whether you do your own or take one with us, you need to learn generative AI. You need to build in the foundation because AGI is coming out soon. Thank you. Have a lovely day. I'm Aliana Moren, founder and chief scientist with Themesis, founder of the Themesis Academy, where you want to go to learn generative AI. We'll see you again soon.